Good evening, and thank you for attending the course selection presentation this evening. I'm Michael Black. I'm the principal of Carlisle High School. Um, also with us this evening are grade level principals, Dr. Patty Buffington. I think she's in the back, grade 12. Uh, Mr. Jay Beals is not able to be with us tonight. He's the grade level, uh, grade 11 principal. He's actually supervising the girls' basketball game that's going on this evening. Mr. Paul Wysocki, who is the grade 10 principal in the back, and Mr. Joe Dunn, grade 9, is also with us tonight. You will have the opportunity to meet our school counselors and department chairs as they will be presenting important information to you this evening. This is an exciting time of year for our students as they start to think about their coursework, their careers, and their futures. We want, to, we want our students to take a challenging course load, but one that fits their goals and their passions. Parents, you should have received a folder upon entering the auditorium which contains key information about course selection. In that folder was a little packet of information. The front page is just some key timelines in which your students will have to complete the course selection process and some other meetings that we will be having with our students. The second page is a QR code which basically, if you scan that, it will pull up our educational planning guide. Some people are a fan of the QR code. Some people are not a fan of the QR code, and they would rather have the 106-page booklet that we offer as our educational planning guide. Mostly those people are uh, the older generation of people. I will tell you, the students, um, they are excited when they see a QR code, and. Um, they are happy to see that they are not receiving a big booklet of information. And yesterday we met with our ninth grade class and a student basically said, it's nice that we're saving all the trees but not producing all those booklets. So the students actually do appreciate the QR codes and saving the time reading the booklet. Also in the bottom are instructions if you need to access our information via the website. That information will go live by the end of this week, and you'll be able to access um, information that we're presenting tonight, course videos. There will also be the educational guide that will be on there, and a lot of other contact information and other important things pertaining to the course selection process. The remaining pages are just the steps that your students will need to take to enter the course information into the power school system. All students, um, Middle school students will be met with their school counselors, high school students. We're meeting with them this week to go over the course selection process. And we also have a representative from our counseling department who will be going and meeting with the local parochial schools um, to talk to their counselors and students as well. The course selection process is a vital piece to providing an adequate student schedule for the next school year. A big thank you to our department chairs who work diligently to prepare quality academic programs and courses, and our school counselors who work hard to provide guidance to all students through the process and answer the many questions which arise. I also want to thank the teachers who have worked hard to create course videos, and my secretary who has spent a tremendous amount of time updating the website and preparing documents for the course selection process. At the conclusion of tonight's presentation, there will be a question and answer session. We ask that questions are general in nature and not specific to your student. If you have specific questions, please feel free to reach out to our department chairs, our school counselors, or grade level principals for help or guidance. Thank you and enjoy the presentation. Good evening, I'm Amanda Rodabaugh. I'm one of the counselors here at the high school. Um, I'm going to start off the presentation by introducing all of you to our counselors. If you guys wanna come up. We have two different buildings, high school buildings here um, at the high school. So we have a Swartz building where our Swartz counselors are located. They have ninth and 10th grade students. Mrs. Kreider has students who have the last names A to G-O. Mrs. Rotz has students with the last names G-R to O. And Mrs. Davidson has students with the last names P to Z. We also have Mag the McGowan counselors and they have students who have the last name, or have 11th and 12th grade students. Mrs. McDonald has students with the last names A to G-O. 
Mrs. Knapp has students with the last names G, R to O, and I, myself, Ms. Rodabaugh, have students with the last names P to Z. We are here to help you guys and your students through this course selection process. So any questions that you may have or your child may have after this presentation or in the next coming weeks, um, please direct those to us. I'm gonna start off by talking about the course selection timeline. Um, Mr. Black had shared with you um, about our educational planning guide. The QR code that you have on that, I think he said the second page um, of your packet will take you directly to our educational planning guide, which is also found on our high school website. You can go to www.carlisleschools.org to access that. It has all of the information about our course selection process, including our courses and descriptions of all of our courses and with prerequisites and all the requirements that you need for each of the courses. Students will be getting a presentation similar to this this week and will have from February 14th on Monday until February 28th to enter their selections into our PowerSchool system. Once they've entered their course selection information into the PowerSchool system, they will have um, until, from then until the first two weeks of the new school year to contact one of their counselors in order to make any changes that they have. We highly recommend that students reach out to their counselors prior to the end of the school year to make sure that they have any changes made because we cannot guarantee that there will be requests will be, will be um, reviewed and um, followed through with after June 30th or June 20th. So to start the course selection process, the big thing that the students are going to need to know is what are our graduation requirements? Students that are in our regular track, not in our CTE programs, have the courses that are listed up here um, that are going to be required of them. They will need four credits of English, which means they will take an English course every year throughout their high school career. They will need three credits of math, three credits of science in the areas of geo-environmental science, biology, and of physical science, three credits of social studies in the categories of US history, world history, and civics, or they could choose to take an AP course to meet that requirement. They will then have an option to do a, for, a fourth core course in one of the areas of either social studies, science, or math, depending on what their career path um, ha leads them to. They are also required to do two credits of arts and humanities. Those could be in the categories of an art, an art class, a music class, or world history or a world language. Um, and then there are a list, there is a list of those courses in about the eighth page, I believe, of the educational planning guide. We have a lot of students ask questions about the arts and humanities classes. We, they also are required to have two credits of PE, health, and safety ed, a combination of those, and six credits of electives that they will get to choose. In total, they will need 24 credits for graduation. Our students that are in our career and tech ed programs in any of the following programs, automotive, culinary, carpentry, or early childhood, have a different set of requirements because of what they need to get for certifications. They need four credits of English, three credits of math, three credits of science, again, in the areas of geo-environmental science, biology, and of physical science, three credits of social studies, um, in the areas of US history, world history, and civics. And you'll notice that they do not need a fourth core course. They only need one credit of art and humanity. And they also will be required to do the two credits of PE, health, and safety ed. The nine credits of electives they will pretty much have within their career and tech programs that will give them the total of 25 credits for graduation. Now I'm gonna turn the presentation over to Mrs. Knapp, who's going to share the different options we have for the different courses. Thanks, Ms. Radova. Uh, I am Mrs. Knapp, I'm one of the counselors in McGowan. So there are some important terms that you should be aware of as you're reviewing course options with your students. Some of these terms are Carlisle High School specific, others are just um, more applicable elsewhere. 
Uh, option one and option two and honors are different levels we use in a lot of our core courses. So not every course is a mixed grouping of students, especially in your academic cores. And this is something that you really wanna give reflection to, you wanna talk about as a family, what type of courses. You do not have, if you take option one in one area, you do not have to take option one in every area. So for each course you're choosing, you really wanna be thinking about the appropriate level for your student. You wanna to talk to their current teachers who know them and their work ethic well to see what option they recommend. And you wanna think about balance because you wanna make sure that everything they're taking works well together and they aren't gonna be overwhelmed with the challenge. The option one courses in our academic program tend to be less rigorous. They often have the majority of the coursework is completed during the school day, so it, is, it has less homework than an option two or an honors course. So for the courses that have option one, it tends to be students who do not plan to go immediately after high school to a four-year college or university. That's not always the case. By taking an option one course, that doesn't mean you cannot uh, go on to continue in a four-year school immediately af after high school. It just tends to be more common for students in option one to be not doing uh, that. It, it does have ramifications in terms of college athletics, so that's something we'll talk about later with the NCAA. Option two courses, many of you may have heard the terminology college prep when you were in high school. That's sort of um, a, a simile for option two here. Those courses are a little more rigorous than your option one. You're gonna be expecting to have more take home homework in those courses. And then honors is gonna be a level up from that. Uh, significantly more homework. You're gonna be, uh, the rigor of the course is gonna be more demanding. There's definitely gonna be a higher expectation. And so, again, this is something that we want you to give thought to and, and try to have balance in your students' schedules and try to be realistic with what their best options are gonna be. Again, we really encourage you to talk to their teachers who have good insight on the curriculum. Advanced placement is another descriptor for a course. You'll see that there are almost no advanced placement options for a ninth grade student, but as your student progresses through high school, there will be more opportunities if they're interested in an advanced placement course. These are courses that have been audited and approved by an agency called the College Board, and they stick to a specific curriculum designed by the College Board in an effort to replicate an introductory level college course. At the end of those courses, there is an optional exam that your student can choose to take. They would have to pay for it, and if they score well, they can earn credit, not just for our high school, but credit that they can then transfer to whatever college or university they attend. So it's a great opportunity for some students to advance their curriculum, experience an introduction to college level work, but again, it's something that should be done with the recommendation of a teacher. It should be done in areas where your students are really passionate and they're gonna to wanna to spend extra time. I always encourage students for their first AP course to take it in an area they love, rather than if, they, if they're a student who never liked English to begin with, then taking their first AP in an English area where they're gonna be expected to do a lot of reading and writing papers might not be the best fit. Weighted value. Um, is something that affects a student's grade point average as well as their class rank. So when a student's cumulative grade point average is calculated from the high school, they are given additional points in that GPA for any honors or advanced placement course that they take. For each marking period they're in that course, if they, whatever they earn, they get an extra .5 value into their GPA on a 4.0 scale, so 0.5 out of 4.0 4 is a pretty high percent, they get that increase, which then increases their GPA and increases their class rank. And those are issues that can become significant on a student's transcript when it's being interpreted by a college for admissions purposes. So we want to, we want to make sure you understand that courses that are designed to be more demanding do have a benefit in your student's GPA and class rank. Dual enrollment would be a, a term that would be important for some of you who have upperclassmen students. Um, dual enrollment programs are programs where your student can take a cl class at our high school 
or in some cases at a college campus and earn credit both from our high school towards those graduation requirements Ms. Radabaugh was mentioning, so it counts as one of their 24 credits they need to earn our diploma, and at the same time gives them credit at a college that they can use a separate transcript for um, and apply to their college matriculation at some point. CVA, you will see that term denoted in the EPG several places as well. That refers to the Carlisle Virtual Academy, and that is our online school. Um, students who choose to take their courses and work from home, not come into the day school, there's a listing of the offerings for those courses as well. Many of them align with our curriculum. Many of them are taught by our own house in-house teachers, but not all of them are. If your student's considering going to the Carlisle Virtual Academy, I encourage you to contact their school counselor. Some notes about our honors and AP courses. As I mentioned earlier, teacher recommendations are so valuable. They're really something, you may think that your student is perfectly prepared for a specific class, but it's really good to get some outside input by someone who knows how your student's been performing in the classroom, who knows who has been successful in the past in those classes, and understands the curriculum really well. So it is not technically required for a student to have their teachers, their current teachers recommendation and approval to take an honors or AP course, but it's a conversation we really encourage both you and your student to engage in. Also, please keep in mind, if your student does take an honors or advanced placement level course, they do have the option to move down a level if it's not the right fit. So when possible, if a student starts in an advanced placement, I'm gonna keep picking on English, an advanced placement English course and tries it but does not have success, you know, goes into school after two, three weeks, even four weeks and has not been successful, we will work our hardest to move them down a level to an option two English course. And that can be done up until the midpoint of the first marking period without harm. We can't guarantee the course is taught at the same time, so it could have an impact on their schedule, their lunch, but, um, but we should typically be able to get them the class. Please keep in mind, in some instances, there is no level, lower level course to move down to, and that would be a, a more problematic. So if your child is taking honors anatomy and physiology, honors Spanish four, there is no lower level of those courses, so you need to check that and make sure you're going in with your eyes wide open is there, a, is there a step down if my student struggles in this course? Some other important considerations when choosing courses, one would be prerequisites. And some of them are really natural. You're not gonna take Spanish three until you've successfully completed Spanish one and two. Some of them are less intuitive and they're things that you need to know about. So if your daughter or son are interested in introduction to medical terminology, they have to have successfully completed biology one before they take that course. So it's important to, that you read the prerequisites and that your student reads the prerequisites for courses. And that really can go into planning. So if they know as a junior they're gonna wanna take introduction to medical terminology, then they wanna plan ahead and make sure they have that biology one completed before that time. We already sp spoke about teacher recommendations. NCAA, double, NCAA eligibility is another concept for those of you who have student athletes. If you have students who may want to participate in Division I or Division II athletics in the college level, they will be looking carefully at the transcript your student submits their senior year. Some courses are approved for NCAA eligibility and some are not. The details for that are in our educational planning guide, and there is a, a mark next to every course whether or not it's NCAA approved. We would be happy to dialogue with, that, with you further about that if you wanna to talk to, to your school counselor. And I'll just mention one more time that balance and time management is really significant when picking your school courses for the next year. Sometimes I think we all are imagining our best self and what we might be that next year, and that's the year I'm gonna turn it on. I'm really gonna do it when I get to ninth grade, and that's fantastic. We wanna support that and support you becoming the best you possible, but you also need to keep in mind how many sports do you play? What are your extracurricular demands? Do you have a job? 
Um, if you're becoming a senior, are you going to be writing essays for scholarships? Are you going to be doing college applications? Might you need a study hall so that you have some, some time for these things? So you need to think about the big picture and balance and time management. This slide just lists for you some of our new courses this year. Some of them are more of a title change. Some of them are actually new courses. Um, we have the finance and investing course in the business department. We have some new internship opportunities that are mostly for juniors and seniors. Those are listed here. Within the math curriculum, some of those are title changes, I believe. Um, and one significant difference is the Raspberry Pi course, which is a type of computer science, if I'm describing that correctly, um, is now going to be getting a weighted value, which it had not in the past. In our music department, they're adding higher levels of some of the already existing courses, which would include advanced guitar, advanced piano, and a second level to our music technology course. There are some courses that we will not be offering this school year. One of them is entrepreneurship. One is the Honors Digital Electronics. Occupational English, which is a special education English course. Those math courses listed there are basically all being replaced um, with other things except for standards math. We're not offering that anymore. The special education course transition into life beyond high school. If you have a student who is looking forward to taking that class, it will be offered again. It's going to be on a rotating every other year basis. And we are no longer offering Chinese one. All right, I think that's all I'm going to share with you this evening. And now uh, Mrs. Ratz is going to continue the presentation. Hi, good evening, everybody. I'm Mrs. Ratz. Um, so I'm just going to go over um, grade assignment and how we move from one grade to the next at the high school level. So if you are a parent of an eighth grade student, um, our eighth graders going into ninth grade are typically assigned by the middle, middle school principal. There's um, no credit count. Um, it is something that you know, they determine at the end of their eighth grade year if they can be promoted to ninth grade. But once you're up at the high school, we look at your credits and how many credits you've earned each school year to determine if you can move on to the next grade level. So to get into 10th grade, students must have uh, passed a minimum of five major credits, including English, to become a 10th grader. So most everybody is going to be taking six full credit classes each school year. So a student to go into 10th grade needs to pass five of those, and one of them must be English. And a full credit class is one that um, is like their core classes or their electives, their PE, health, safety ed, those do not count as a full credit class. Whoops. Here we go. So to be an 11th grade student, um, you have to have passed 10 major credits, including two English credits, to become an 11th grader. And then a 12, to become a 12th grade student, you need to have earned at least 16 major credits and be able to complete all graduation requirements by the end of the regular school year. And those are all those requirements that we saw earlier in the presentation. Those are all also listed in the educational planning guide as well. So just some general recommendations. Um, you can, when you're filling out the course selection with your student, agree with the teacher recommendation um, of the agree with the teacher recommendation for that student for that course, um, and then you know just keep going through the course selection process. Or you may disagree with what the teacher recommends. And as we stated before, um, for some classes the recommendation is not a requirement. So if you disagree with the, the course level that the teacher recommended your student for, um, you can have a conversation with that teacher. You can reach out to the school counselor, and we can have a conversation about it. Um, but if you still disagree after that point, you can write a letter stating that you understand the recommendation, and you disagree and would prefer another class. We do ask that the letter have the parent's signature and the date, and we keep that on file just for our records so we know that there was a conversation. <clears throat> and if your child does begin to struggle, um, this is just for ninth graders in particular, um, <clears throat> the ninth grade principal will be the only person authorized to possibly make that change. So general suggestions, um, just to reiterate, um, we're encouraging students to take the toughest sequence of courses that you can handle realistically. So again, taking into consideration 
um, what your extracurriculars are, um, just you know what yeah what things you're involved with, how you are as a student. Um, for some kiddos taking four honors classes might be very realistic and very doable. For others, it may not. So just think through that and what types of sequence of courses you can take that you can handle and be successful in. Read the course descriptions very carefully. Make sure you and your student know exactly what we're signing up for, because we've had many students get into a class and they're like, this is not what I wanted. This is not what I, I thought this class was going to be. So do read those descriptions. And then consider the career goal when selecting courses. <clears throat> so lots of our electives um, can pair up with different careers, and it's a great opportunity to try out different classes and areas of interest to see if that's a career that your student wants to get into later in their future. Try to develop a four-year plan. What would you like to be able to take your senior year? There are a lot of prerequisites for courses, so kind of getting an idea of what you'd like to take in 12th grade and then working backwards can be helpful to make sure that you get those prerequisites in so that you can take those classes that you want to later. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, when you're completing, or your student is completing the course selection process in PowerSchool, there is an elective section where you make your elective choices, and that is a requirement. You have to complete that section. Um, so please make sure that your student is filling that out. And then finally, your teachers consider many factors when they recommend a class. So um, not to harp on that, but it is something that they do put a lot of time into and a lot of thought into when they're recommending um, students, so just be mindful of that when you're going through that process. Okay, at this time, we're going to have our department chairs come up and speak a little bit more about the classes that they offer in those departments, and I believe we are starting with Mr. Wagner. Good evening, my name is Kevin Wagner. I'm the Social Studies Program Chair. About six years ago, the Carlisle Area School District was authorized by the College Board to begin offering what become known as the AP Capstone Program. This program is only offered in about 7% of all high schools nationwide, so it's pretty selective that Carlisle has this capability. It, the AP Capstone is similar to the International Baccalaureate Program, if you've heard IB mentioned before, but it's the College Board version. Uh, it also kind of makes a student stand out a little bit more, perhaps, in their, their college uh, application. The common application actually now has a checkbox that says, I am applying for the AP, AP Capstone Diploma, so they can alert colleges to that. Um, the Capstone Diploma requires that the student takes four AP courses uh, and the exams and get a three or higher on those. They can be in any subject area that they desire. And then they also take the AP seminar course and then the AP research course. The AP seminar course um, basically is a foundational course that engages students in cross-curricular conversations that explore the complexities of academic and real world topics and issues by analyzing divergent perspectives. And unlike other AP courses, it's not just an end of course exam. That only makes up 40% of the, their score. They actually will create a team project and presentation. That's 25%. And then they do an individual research-based essay and a presentation that is 35% of their score. And the first half of the year is basically spent doing uh, skill development. It's known as Quest questioning, understanding, evaluating, synthesizing, and transmitting. So we're taking them on a quest, if you will. And then in the second semester, they put all of those skills to work in developing these two projects. So the, it's a lot um, self-paced, if you will. The AP seminar is open to any incoming 10th grader or 11th grader. And then the AP research course follows that. They must take AP seminar before they can take the AP research course. And in this, they literally are designing their own research-backed project of their own design in any academic or discipline field. Um, they start from scratch. The best way to compare it is they are literally creating a master's level thesis at the high school level. And so this really does set students apart, particularly if your son or daughter is looking at AP courses 
these two courses really can make them stand out. How many students, when they leave high school, can say, I developed my own research project, conducted it, and at the end, there is a 20-minute oral defense that they must do in front of a group of community members uh, which score that oral defense. So these are kind of outstanding programs and, and a little unique. Um, if you think your son or daughter may be interested in the table out in the lobby, there is more information in the handout that's available to you. Um, and I would encourage students to think about it. Again, the seminar is open to 10th and 11th graders, and then AP Research would be 11th or 12th grade. Good evening, my name is Ashley Gojoy and I'm the Art and Design Program Chair. I'm gonna to talk to you about different art options that your children would have. So we have five different courses at the high school that do not require any prerequisites. So these are open, um, four of them are open to ninth grade students and one of them is open to any um, 10th, 11th, or 12th grade student in the high school. The recommendation, the last one is AP Art History. The recommendation is really for 11th and 12th grade, for, but from time to time we've had uh, 10th grade students take that course. So the four classes that are open to any student is Drawing and Painting 1, Digital Media 1, Sculpture and Ceramics 1, and Art Exploration. And I'll explain a little bit more about each of those classes. So the first one, AP Art History, recommended for 11th and 12th grade students. That is an AP course, so just like you've heard tonight, um, students can potentially get um, some college credit for taking this class if they score high enough on the AP exam. So students participate in art criticism, being able to interpret artworks, learning about, obviously, the history behind artworks, and um, students learn about uh, a little bit about curation, about how to curate an exhibit, and um, it's very um, hands-on. Students, in, when it's a non-COVID year, are often going on many field trips within the area to local art museums, and um, it's a great way, it's a great AP class that also um, balances a student's schedule. It's just a different perspective, different way of looking at things. Uh, another Intro class is Art Exploration. This is a class that I recommend for students who are interested in taking an art class but are really not sure um, what type of art they want to pursue. So it's an everything art class. Students do painting, drawing, ceramics, sculpture, printmaking. It's like a little bit of everything. They kind of brush the surface of many, many different areas. And the idea is that Again, if they didn't know what type of class they wanted to take, they just know they enjoyed art, it's a good one for them. Um, and it's also, it, it can help your child if they are interested in pursuing more art classes in the future. They can make uh, a little bit more of an educated decision about what type of class they would be interested in taking after taking this course. There are three different pathways that students can take um, that have different levels, ninth through 12th grade. Those pathways are drawing and painting. They start in ninth grade, drawing and painting one, two, three, and AP. If you are a 12th grade student and you've never taken um, the level one, you can take drawing and painting one. So um, although students who are no, I want to um, work on painting, they might wanna start as a ninth grader and then take the next level as a 10th grader next level as 11th grader and then all the way up through AP studio as a 12th grader. But you don't have to go in that order. We have many juniors and seniors who are starting out for the first time in a drawing and painting one class. That is fine too. The other option is digital media. Again, that goes one, two, three, all the way up through AP. So we can potentially get college credit for taking an art class your senior year. And the same goes for sculpture and ceramics one, one, two, three, all the way up through AP. If your child is interested in taking a drawing and painting class, this is where they're going to learn about a lot of different experimental painting techniques. They're gonna learn about all different types of drawing mediums, and they're going to create portraits, drawing from observation, landscapes, abstract art, um, all under drawing and painting. And again, that's one, two, three, all the way up through AP. 
If your child is interested in creating art, but using the computer as their art medium, digital media is a great um, option for them. Students are gonna be using Photoshop and InDesign, which are professional design um, programs. It's the same programs that people that are working at Disney or Pixar are using and professional graphic designers are using. Students are gonna learn about illustration, animation, graphic design, digital photography, and package design. And the last pathway is Sculpture and Ceramics 1, 2, 3, all the way up through AP. This is where students are gonna work three-dimensionally on ceramics, um, sculpture. They're gonna learn how to throw pottery on a wheel. And um, if students enjoy working with their hands, this is a great option for them. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Perillo. I'm the Director of Careers and Technology. I'm gonna be discussing some of the options for students who might be interested in taking career and technology courses or programs. So here's a list of 11 programs we offer at the high school. We are one of a um, couple of schools in the, in the state that offer career and tech uh, courses and programs within the high school. Also, the pre this presentation for ninth and for eighth and ninth and tenth and eleventh, I have a re I have a recording. So, if you want to look in detail, you can access that on our website, the high school page, or on the career and tech education tab of our district. So, advantages of taking career and tech courses: you can start a career right out of high school. You can earn college credits. You're doing live hands-on work. You'll earn certifications for those specific program areas. You can get involved with DECA, eSports, SkillsUSA, or some of our clubs for, for career and tech. Also, senior year, they can, junior and senior year, and some 10th grade, grade students are able to do work-based learning experiences to go out and work at different business and industry, local and regional, that we have uh, connections with and get paid, and also continue learning their skills uh, with someone in, in, the, in their profession. One of our first programs is broadcast communications. So students can work for Herd TV. They learn how to, how to work with the media, media design, uh, editing, filming. Uh, starts, I, I recommend ninth grade year. They take, ninth graders take uh, exploring, sorry, exploring video. Uh, this, uh, and then 10th grade, they would take the next one, broadcasting one, and then senior, uh, 11th, 12th grade broadcasting two, and then hopefully the senior year they go out and they start working in the field. Information technology, this program uh, gets them ready for network administration, security administration, put it, taking together, putting a, a computer back together, doing, uh, setting up networks for, for home or for office or business. We, they also have eSports, so if students are interested in eSports, they can also do that with this program. For uh, ninth graders, which I don't have that on here, it's a different presentation, they should be taking IT1 or Information Technology 1, and then 10th graders should take IT2, and then 11th IT3, and so on. Uh, also recommend it is uh, Raspberry Pi as part of the program, and they can also do an internship their senior year. So we have four of our programs are three-year programs. The first two that I mentioned were four-year programs because so students can start as freshmen. The next, uh, early childhood education, culinary, carpentry, and automotive technology are three-year programs. So if you're a ninth, if a ninth grade student cannot, eighth to ninth, they cannot take this program until their 10th grade year. So and they, these are more competitive because there's only so many positions or so many spots open. So one of our programs, early childhood education, students are working, we have a preschool here, so students will learn how to do lesson plans if they're interested in becoming an uh, elementary school teacher or working in a preschool or any areas such as hospitals or, or areas that have some type of ch early childhood interventions and education, that's probably good places that those students can work. Right now we have, I think all of our seniors are out working somewhere in the community, so they're earning a wage and they're also gaining experience. Automotive technology is another three-year program. 
Uh, so ninth grade year, I recommend them taking foundations of technology so they can see how they like the hands-on part of it. Then sophomore year, they would take Auto One and then so forth. Right now, I believe all of our students for Auto Tech are out on cooperative education as well, except for maybe one senior. So they're working for um, uh, either dealerships or mom and pop auto tech um, uh, businesses in, in the area. And you know, they're also, by their, before they leave, they'll, they can get their safety emissions and inspection license before they graduate. Carpentry Construction, that's another program that's a three-year program and starts sophomore year. And you can see the list of certifications up there. We also have an IEC program, which I'll talk about in a second. So sophomore year, they would take Carpentry 1 and then Carpentry 2. And I, and I believe we have all seniors out on cooperative education or capstone right now working for Low Bar, Mallory & Sons, and other companies in our area. And that's not to say these students can't go to college but they're choosing to work, so they can still have that option when they graduate. Culinary Arts is another three-year program, that, so 10th grade year, the students would, would start. If you're, if you're ninth, the eighth going into ninth grade, I recommend you take foods and baking to prep you for that, and then all of our seniors, one just returned, they were all working at some type of um, business, business, local business or restaurant or hotel uh, on our capstone program. And you can see they get our ACF certification before they graduate. Our Business Academy, that's a four-year program. So starting as a ninth grade student, students can take Intro to Business, Communications, and, and Careers. They run the, our students run the school store. Uh, marketing and Accounting are the two programs that you can focus on before you graduate. And then you'll see the list for 11th grade, uh, 11th and 12th grade, and then for accounting or marketing, depending on how they want to split. We also have a capstone program at Belco, which is one of the local banks, and there's other opportunities that students can work in the community. This student, this pro, the, the Business Academy has a lot of students in it. They also focus on things like the stock market, global economics, and really learning about how to run a business. Engineering Technology is another four-year program we offer here. Uh, ninth grade students should take either honors intro to engineering or foundations to technology. And there'll be a list um, on the website. ECAD is also one, and architectural engineering and design. This program has a couple teachers in it, so we're able to offer more courses. And we have a lot of honors courses in here. We also have a cell lab, which is the Carlisle Engineering Learning Lab. Seniors in the program take on live work from the school. They'll do design. The goal is to get, to get the students creating and designing in industrial, manufacturing, and other types of engineering areas so they're getting uh, the, those skill areas. Health careers. This is for 11th and 12th graders. I recommend their 11th grade year. They take anatomy and physiology. They take introduction to medical, medical careers and then medical term one. We also have a program through UPMC Hospital. It's a career exploration program. Their second half of their junior year, they would go and do an exploratory in the hospital, doing work in all different parts of the hospital. Then through the summer, they would continue to work in a selected area. And then their senior year, they would continue to work in that specific area of the hospital. And before they graduate, they would earn their uh, personal care assistant certification or patient care. It's, I think it's personal. Personal care assistant certification. We also have an EMS program, so students can get their EMT certification before they graduate it. So if they're interested, 11th grade year is when they would talk to myself or the health careers teacher or our cooperative education teacher, Mrs. Stritch. 12th grade year, they could take medical terminology. They could also do the certified nurse assistant program. We also have, for senior, uh, senior year only, Penn State Holy Spirit program, similar to UPMC, but it's an exploratory rotation at Holy Spirit Hospital. CT elective courses, if you have students that aren't sure what they want to do, these are the list of courses they can take. Some of them I already mentioned. And then we also have CT elective courses through Family and Consumer Sciences. They, next year, as a, as a ninth grade student coming in, they can take Foods and Baking Skills for Success and Child Development. And then 10th through 12th, it's recommended that they take those two courses that I have listed up there. Uh, work-based learning experiences, we have a lot of work-based learning experiences we offer at the high school. 
Some of them can start 10th grade or 11th grade year. Just looking down the list, architectural construction engineering, that's an after school program where students will be able to work with local engineers and they get training on and they do a design and that's usually in the spring semester. We also have a relationship with uh, uh, ENG Electric and DeRock Electric where students can do a pre-apprenticeship program through the IEC and they, can, they do that their 12th grade year. They do the pre-apprenticeship, they pass, and then those two employers, if they're working for them, they will hire them on and put them through the apprenticeship program. Another program we have is USA Spares. It starts with students in their 11th grade year. So they'll be able to work at USA Spares doing precision machining and welding. This is a program designed for students to, to work with them, and then when they graduate high school, they pay for their next part of their education. We have a student that graduated last year. He's at Thaddeus Students, Stevens College, and they're paying for, he's doing welding there, so they paid for that, and he's still working at USA Spares, but the agreement is that they at least put, after they finish, they work three more years with them, and it's a pretty good paying job, and then they can go wherever they want when they have that experience. Uh, another program we have is PA Career Link. It allows students that aren't sure what they want to do. They can get involved in this program, and it can uh, help them figure out a career area they're in, and we work with, uh, uh, the local WIOA uh, organization for that. I already mentioned BELCO, an EMT program, CNA, and I mentioned the rest of the program. We also have a career and nonprofit internship. So students who are interested in nonprofits will be able to do a rotation with nonprofits, set, I think five or six nonprofits we have in the area. Then they select which one they want to work for, and then they'll work for that nonprofit and get, and it's typically paid. I mentioned capstone program, our seniors that are in, in Specific programs, the capstone means when they're seniors, they can go out and start working for local companies and earning a wage and also getting credits. We also have uh, career internships for students that aren't in a program. They can still go out and do career internships, whether it's a law firm or other areas that they're interested in. We have some doing internships with, with teachers here. And then our diversified occup occupations program are for students who are not in the program but they're working or they need to earn money to help support, it could be for, for themselves or family, because some of our students do work to support their families here, but we can get them out and working and it could be any place, Sheets, Walmart, wherever, they're, they're earning money. We also have for uh, ninth, ninth grade students and 10th and 11th and rising 11th graders, you can work as a vol for volunteer work experience doing setting up um, setting up the audiovisual equipment, learning how to set up for musicals and plays so the student would be assist, assistant with uh, Mr. Grayson or Mr. Reck. And if this is on the website, if, if you know your student might be interested in this, please have them email him at rec at carlisleschools.org because there's only so many seats, but it's a good experience. So what happens next? Talk to your, they're gonna talk to their school counselor, review the CTA website, and also look at the videos online. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Keely McGeehan. I'm the English department head teacher. If your head is spinning a little bit from all of those CTE options, let me simplify things for you a little bit. Um, you may have noticed earlier in the presentation that English is one of, is the only course that students need to take all four years of their experience at Carlisle High School. Um, so I won't dwell, and we don't have very many options, not nearly as many as the CTE program. As was explained earlier, our option one classes are intended, uh, are designed with an emphasis on practical application, the coursework is um, more limited to in-class work, less homework. Um, option two is a focus on college preparation. It's intended mainly for students who are planning to go to a four-year college after graduation from Carlisle High School. Um, and our honors English one and two is offered ninth grade year and 10th grade year. Um, and that is recommended for students um, planning to elect AP then, an AP track in their 11th grade and 12th grade um, years. So if, again, kind of planning with the end in mind, if the goal of your student is to enroll in our two AP classes, um, which I'll talk about in just a moment, they would want to be considering as they enter ninth grade, the honors um, 
option as they move into ninth grade. And again, that teacher recommendation in eighth grade, if you have a rising um, freshman, is really important in that discussion to have with your eighth grade teacher um, is a really important discussion to, to help you decide and help your student decide if that's the right pathway for, for your student. Um, that's not to say that that's kind of the end all be all decision, so I, I wouldn't put so much pressure on your student if they're a rising freshman to say you have to necessarily go into that honors track. Um, there's certainly an option if your student decides to do um, option one, or excuse me, option two next year, and that seems, it seems like they could take on an additional challenge or kind of up the ante a little bit in their sophomore year, it's certainly possible for a student to, to move from option two into an honors course in their 10th grade year. Um, likewise, it's always an option for a student to move from an option one English course into an option two English course the following year. So those, um, that, those are, are flexible and kind of fluid, and I just want that to, to be clear as well. Um, our AP course expectations, we offer AP language and composition in the 11th grade year, um, and we offer AP literature and composition in the 12th grade year. Um, I would add and that these are really nice courses to pair with the AP capstone um, program and that students could, these could count for two of the AP courses that count toward those four courses that you need um, in that capstone program. Um, we tend to recommend and also expect that students will sit for the end of year exam if they enroll in these classes, though it is not a requirement. Um, but because of that, students can expect some I mean, everything we do in these AP courses is meant to prepare students for those exams, but it doesn't necessarily look like test prep. Um, but because they are preparing for an end of the year exam, they can expect to be writing, for example, timed essays in class or be doing some multiple choice test, test prep work in class. So that should be noted as well. Um, of course, the expectation out of class is somewhat increased with the AP language courses or AP, AP uh, literature course. Um, and students can expect uh, a more rigorous uh, and fast-paced course with additional um, homework expectations in these courses. Um, summer reading is just something to note that students coming into the high school can earn extra credit um, for their first uh, and second marking period grades. Um, so you can find our extra credit or our su optional summer reading program information about that on the district website under academics. If students complete one project, they can earn up to two percentage points. If students complete two projects over the summer, they can earn up to four percentage points, and those would be split over the um, marking period one and marking period two, not to exceed two percentage points in either of those marking periods per the district guidelines. Um, we do offer some electives that I'd like to share with you this evening. Um, these first two are only for students in grades 11 and 12. Uh, we offer creative writing, which is the cross-genre exploration of the craft of writing and publishing um, and, and, and having conversations surrounding art, uh, writing as a career, potential career pathway. And um, we also offer uh, Shakespeare page to stage, which is actually... Oh, just kidding, yeah. Uh, sorry, we offer a Shakespeare page to stage um, for in grades 10 and 11 as well. Sorry, so 10, 11, and 12. And um, students can expect to read Shakespeare, um, perform, and have directing opportunities, um, working with their peers to direct their peers, and kind of all facets of putting on a, a production and taking it from the page to the stage. Um, we also sometimes offer lectures or we have guest speakers coming into that course as well. Um, so it's just a really good experience for students to work um, very uh, closely with a text and with a difficult and challenging text at that and to really make it come alive. Um, and so that's a great course for students who are looking for the challenge of close and careful reading of a difficult and challenge of difficult and challenging text and wanting to kind of think about how to take the take the text that they're reading and bring it to life a little bit on the stage. We also offer um, two publication electives. Our Oracle is our yearbook staff and anyone in grades 9 through 12 can be part of that class. Um, they're 
is teacher approval, teacher recommendation recommended there as well. It explores yearbook, yearbook production, um, research, photography, the layouts, so kind of some graphic design elements there as well. So if a student is interested in that, that would be a wonderful fit for them and kind of bringing all of those uh, fields together. And Periscope is our news magazine and website, and that is, uh, of course, focused on journalism, publication, again, editing and layout, um, and also web design, since much of it is an online publication at this point. And that is also open to um, students in grades 9 through 12. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Kelly Brent. I am the math uh, program chair. And behind me, you'll see a list of all the math courses that we offer at Carlisle. Like the other um, departments, we have typical sequences and pathways that students go through in, in their math career at Carlisle High School. But, um, and I have those in the EPG. What I found in my many years of doing this is that students develop their their mathematical self <laughs> at different times. And I'm so proud of Carlisle High School in the fact that we're, we're flexible in our pathways. If your student started Algebra 1, let's say, in ninth grade, and really got turned on to math in that course, they might decide they want to try honors geometry instead of uh, regular geometry. On the other hand, if a student comes into ninth grade in honors geometry and has um, decided perhaps that they are really turned on to English or science and they want to concentrate their honors and AP in that area, we, they might go from honors geometry to algebra two and not necessarily stay in the honors track, shall we say. And I'm very proud of the flexibility that, um, that the math uh, curriculum and all our departments offer. So as a result, I have the math courses just listed up there. <laughs> I don't know if that's more confusing. I didn't mean it to be. Um, you are required, your student is required to have a minimum of three math credits. Um, four would be recommended if your uh, student is going on to a four-year college. How, where you enter the sequence is springboarded from your eight, eighth grade what your child is taking in eighth grade. Some of them are taking eighth grade math, some of them are taking algebra one, some of them are taking accelerated algebra two. So depending on what, what you took there will kind of place you into the math sequence. Typically, we, make, we would like our students to have algebra one, whether that's with algebra one A and algebra one B, which are um, algebra one A is half of algebra one, Algebra 1B is the second half of Algebra 1. At the end of their 10th grade year then, they would have Algebra 1. It isn't watered down Algebra 1, it's Algebra 1. It's just uh, slowed down over two years, and we um, find that students are more successful that way. Some students that are struggling a little bit. Um, we, or, if, or else you will just take Algebra 1, perhaps in ninth grade, then we'd like you to have Algebra 1, Geometry or Honors Geometry, and Algebra 2 or Honors Algebra 2 is a typical pathway for a math sequence. Several of our students will double up with their math. So they'll take um, probability and statistics or AP statistics at the same time that they're taking pre-calculus or AP calculus. So it's um, a lot of a nice list for your your student for their math career, but it's also pretty individualized. So I'm anxious for you to talk to me, or your student will talk to their math teacher, who knows where they are and knows this this uh, sequence and can guide them best. We, I do want to highlight a couple. I, at the bottom, you'll notice that we have uh, Raspberry Pi, AP Computer Science Principles, AP Computer Science A. Those will receive math credits. Those are computer science courses, but they are um, math-oriented, and they, you will, your child will receive a math credit for all of those, whichever they choose to take. And again, many times our students will be taking 
a one of those computer science courses and a math course if they've chosen to use that as their elective. A new course that we're offering at Carlisle High School is something called essential, essential Math. This course is uh, typically, it could be any time after Algebra 1A, Algebra 1B, um, Geometry, and then Essential Math their senior year. We are tailoring it to real life geometry and financial algebra are the two areas that we'll study. Um, they'll do geometry related to the real world. We'll be um, doing area and perimeter problems in, uh, in real world situations. Um, and then the financial algebra, we'll be doing things with taxes and owning a home and budgeting and all the math that goes along with, with that. So we're very, very excited about that option. But typically that would be taken after Algebra 1 or and Geometry, more of their junior and senior year. But again, I don't have really grade levels on here. You would look for the prerequisites and they're just so varied. We have ninth graders coming in out of um, accelerated Algebra 2 going right into Honors Geometry and into Pre-Calculus. So, um, and then we have ninth seniors in pre-calculus. So it just, it depends where they, where they fell in, in the sequence. Um, I also wanted to talk about our dual enrollment program. You'll see college algebra with the word hack beside it and trigonometry with the word hack beside it. Those are our dual enrollment courses. Your student will get college credit for taking college algebra and another three credits for taking trigonometry if they choose to take that. They are offered just one semester. So the college algebra would be taught, um, well, we're, we're already done with college algebra for this year. So we took that, that in the fall and it runs very close to the same um, time as the college kids are taking college algebra at, at Hack. And uh, that would, that does come with a fee. They, they have to uh, pay for the college credits, but it's very much reduced. I have a flyer outside if you'd like to, if you're considering college algebra or trigonometry. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Brent. My name is Byron Mikesell. I'm the music department chair. Um, I direct the symphonic band and teach some of the other music courses. And I'd like to just uh, show you quickly a couple things here tonight. Uh, the first slide that we see is the music ensembles. Uh, we hope that the students who play an instrument or sing will continue to do that. And um, so there are a lot of options there. Um, a student who is coming in as a, a new, as a ninth grader, um, or even a tenth grader, may decide to sign up for a concert band. Um, generally, after they take concert band, most of our students are good to move on to symphonic band. Uh, Mr. Ellinger directs the concert band, and so if there's any question about whether the student is ready, have them talk to him, um, and he'll be sure to, to let them know if he thinks they're ready for symphonic band. But most of our students are, are being recommended um, to move on. The similar thing happens with concert choir and chamber singers. Most of our students um, are ready to move on after a year or two in concert choir and move up to chamber singers. The orchestra, there's only one level of that. And if you have trouble fitting everything into your schedule and the student wants to continue in music, which we certainly hope they will, there are non-credit options available where they can take one of the ensembles. Um, it, we just need to know that ahead of time so that our secretary or whoever does the scheduling can work their schedule so that they can be placed in the ensemble um, alternating with their health and PE courses. So we need to make sure that they sign up for it. And we found that in the past, sometimes students know, hey, this isn't gonna fit in. I can't work this in with my foreign language or whatever else I need to take. And so they end up not signing up at all. We really need them to put that number for non-credit on their course selection so that we know, hey, this is something they would like to continue to do. And then we'll work to get that into their schedule. These three electives, the piano, music theory, advanced piano, which is new for next year, and the AP music theory, these are three that are really great courses. 
to have taken if a student wants to study music beyond high school. Now that's not necessary um, in order for them to take these classes because for example, the piano music theory course is good if they just wanna learn how to play the piano, they're just curious about uh, playing and um, so it's perfect for them but it also contains some basic music theory things that will prepare them to um, take the AP music theory course and be hugely successful in that course with Mr. Shade. And the advanced piano, that is where a student may sign up if they've already taken piano music theory or if they've had you know, years of lessons or something like that, um, they should come and speak with me and I'll hear them play and make sure that they're ready to move into advanced piano, but um, that is a cool course that'll be offered almost as an independent study kind of thing. The courses that are listed here are other music electives. The first one, the Perspectives of Music in Popular Culture, uh, Mr. Shade is teaching. Students do a lot of listening. They do a lot of talking about how music fits in with the history of popular culture and things. And then the next two kind of go together, Intro to Music Tech, and next year, a new course, Advanced Music Tech. And uh, so you'll find that um, in, in the course selection. And any student who's taken the intro course is eligible to take the Advanced Music Tech course. This course, in both of these courses actually, the students compose music using software and, and instruments. They'll do some basic um, recording techniques where they may compose. Um, digital music, and then they'll record a part, like if they play guitar or they sing, for example. We have some microphones and some other equipment where they can record um, and create a composition that way. Um, the final two courses on here, the guitar and history of rock and roll, that is what it, what it says. Um, you'll learn basics of the guitar. Some students have already played guitar before they come into the class. That's perfectly fine. In fact, that's amazing if they have, because we, what we do is we give them opportunity to practice and develop their skills beyond where they are. And so it can be treated and it's treated for those students almost more of an independent study kind of thing, moving them forward if they have experience already. The same thing will happen with the advanced guitar for any students who would sign up for that. Um, I would also just say um, this, this concludes the um, music courses that we have to offer. But if students cannot fit a music course into their schedule, there are other options. And I'm involved in one of those right now. We're doing jazz band tonight. There are other things that happen throughout the school year um, that we advertise on the announcements. We'll send um, information home to students and parents in our ensembles. Um, and so there are ways that the students can remain involved uh, with music even if they aren't able to sign up for one of the courses. So thank you for uh, forgiving me as I bow out to go back to jazz band. Thanks so much for your attention tonight. Good evening. My name's Samantha Moyer, and I'm here to quickly talk about the science department. So as everybody had mentioned previously with the counselors, there are three specific classes that you have to take for a graduation requirement. You do need a geo-environmental based science, and those geo requirements could come from either geo-environmental science, option one, option two, or honors, or the AP environmental science, which we offer a little bit later in their high school career. Biology, which can include honors, the option one track or the option two track. AP Bio does not satisfy this requirement since those other courses are the feeder courses to the AP Bio. And then one physical science course, which could include the chemistry or the physics. And again, you can see the different pathways for chemistry with the applied being the option one. You do have chemistry, which is the option two and the honors chemistry. And then you have physics, which is the physics, honors physics, and you do have the aerospace engineering, which was actually already mentioned by Alperla with the CTC program. Um, Incoming freshmen only, you do kind of have two options. So science can be a little bit tricky when you're doing your course scheduling because you do have a couple different pathways and a couple different options, which sometimes can make it a little bit confusing. Um, but your geoenvironmental science, you can do an option one or an option two your ninth, grade, your ninth grade year, or you could choose to do the honors bio your ninth grade year. Um, the honors biology are going to be typically for the accelerated pathways. And with the bio, 
actually any science, once you're in the high school, it's going to pair really, really closely with your math courses. So if you're in the accelerated math program at the middle school, then you should probably consider taking the honors bio if you have room and like um, Amy had discussed, you have that balance with your schedule. If you are not able to take the honors bio your ninth grade year, you can certainly do the geo your freshman year. And we're starting to see a lot more sophomores actually cycle back and take honors bio as an option their 10th grade year. So you do have a couple different options um, for your course selection for that. The electives in science, if you already took the physics as your physical science, then your electives would be in the chemistry realm. If you took the chemistry as your physical science um, requirement, then you can be looking at your physics as your electives. The other elective options include honors anatomy and physiology, which also satisfies part of the CTC program for the health careers program of study. AP environmental science, AP physics, AP chemistry, and AP biology, with the AP being the advanced placement courses. Um, some considerations, like I already said, the math class, well, the math courses that your children are in really are imperative that you are looking at those prereqs in the EPG. Um, as you get into the chemistry and physics, it really is a math course coupled with a little bit of science. Um, so it's really important that they are comfortable with their math skills. Um, obviously, it's high level, so we want to make sure that we're setting them up for success and they're not going to be struggling with the mathematical concepts that are found in those science courses. Um, I just use an example. Those enrolling in honors chemistry would really need to be taking Algebra 2 or have already passed Algebra 2. So like Kelly Brent had mentioned previously, some of these kids are coming out of the middle school um, ready to take honors pre-calc or ready going to be sitting in honors geometry. So that pairs really nicely with that accelerated track. If they're not in that, then that is perfectly fine. Um, like Kelly had mentioned with math, we have a lot of different flexibility and a lot of different pathways that the students can take. Um, some general science questions to try to hopefully help as many people as possible in the audience. Um, students can double up in the sciences. That's the short answer. But again, make sure their math is um, ready for those other classes that they're going to be taking on. And then that second science course would take an elective slot. So that's really important that students understand that. Um, electives are nice to have on your um, schedule and sometimes having a nice uh, open slot for um, one of their other um, interests is always appreciated, but that would take an elective slot, so that's really important to, to know that. Our advanced placement courses um, do require feeder courses, so if they take an AP Bio, they would obviously need to take Bio before they take that. If they take AP Chemistry, they would need a chemistry class. The only one that is um, not needing a feeder class is the AP Environmental Science course, okay? So they can take that in lieu of the Honors Geo or the Geo Environmental Science. Um, I think the students breathe a sigh of relief knowing this now, uh, but science fairs and summer work are no longer required for the sciences. However, we really do encourage students to participate in the different science fairs that are available um, either locally, regionally, or in the state. And yes, we are a tested subject in biology. They will sit for the Keystone exam, so that's another really important consideration to take um, into you know, account that they are going to be studying and prepping for this really large state test at the end of their biology year. It is only biology that is tested at this point in the sciences. Hopefully it stays that way. Um, and then you will have other videos that are available for you to look at on our website. You can um, hear straight from my teacher's mouths uh, what their curriculum is like, what their class is like, some of the expectations that your child can expect to be sitting in their classes. So honors anatomy and physiology, advanced placement chemistry, advanced placement bio, and advanced placement environmental science all have video links. If you're an incoming freshman, your eighth grade teachers just received a video from me um, explaining a little bit about honors biology as well. That is it. Thank you. So I'm back just to give a little bit in terms of social studies. Social studies in history has kind of been in the news a lot lately, and it's very complex, but we make ours pretty simple up here. So I have one slide, and that's it. Um, ninth graders are required to take U.S. history, option one, two, or honors. 
10th grade is world history, same three levels. And then 11th grade is where things get a little uh, more choice. Uh, most 11th graders would take civics, but that's when our AP courses take into play. So we do offer AP European, AP US history, and AP US government and politics. And then social studies has a lot of electives that are available to students, and as has been mentioned before, there's a fourth year requirement of either math, science, or social studies, and we find a lot of students fit in a social studies elective their senior year. And a lot of these can fit with certain professions as well. So particularly, I'm thinking like law enforcement, or thinking maybe about nursing or psychology. Um, our psychology and sociology courses are, are a good fit for, for something of that nature. Um, anthropology and world geography are also in there. Law and modern issues, if they're thinking about particularly in the criminal justice system and how our court systems work. And this past year, we just introduced comparative study of world religions, which takes a survey course of all the religions in the world and how they interplay with our society and make us who we are as human beings. And that's all I have. Okay, Aria. See, aquí estoy. Bonsoir. Guten Abend. Buenas noches. Uh, so my name is Heather Bosnack, and I am the World Language and English Language Development Program Chair. And similar to, but unlike some of my um, counterparts here, I have a pretty straightforward path. <laughs> um, so just a couple of uh, overview slides here for you. So we have our beginning level language classes. These are available for ninth through 12th grade students. No prerequisites at all for these courses. Um, so we have our French one, German one, and Spanish one. And we also have an international languages and culture course. Now, if you are a um, eighth grader now, rising ninth grader, and you were taking our LACE course in middle school, that is the middle school equivalent of international languages and cultures. So that has now prepared you um, if you want to continue down a world language path to either choose level one of French, German, or Spanish, um, but you would not be repeating the international languages and culture course. Um, then as we move forward, it's pretty much straight down. So we, um, in level three um, of all of our languages, it turns into an honors course. Um, as you know, learning a language requires practice. So while we don't have a certain number of minutes that you should expect to be studying at night, um, and it might not be a worksheet to go home and do. Um, we do expect our students um, throughout all of our levels, but especially as we move into levels three, four, and AP, expect them to do work with the language at home. That might be practicing some vocabulary on sites, playing some games, watching movies in the target language. Um, it can be very fun homework. And um, learning a language and being able to communicate with someone else is a fabulous skill. Um, also, if you are in that college-bound track, then you want to think about what colleges or universities you might be going to. Most um, post-secondary schools will expect students to have at least two years consecutive in high school. So that would be levels one and two, or if they're taking level one in eighth grade, they're straight into level two up here at the high school, which actually gives them the opportunity to get up to those AP courses. And that's what we've talked about in many of our other um, tracks as well with science and math and social studies and English. Um, AP gives them the opportunity to sit for that exam and to earn some college credits. So, um, the more consecutive years that you take, um, the better for college-bound students. We do um, suggest, just like with any of our other classes, you need to have a teacher recommendation to move on um, to the next level. And we do that for student sanity. <laughs> we don't want you to go someplace that you're not going to be happy or that's going to stress you out. Um, we are arts and humanities. We should be fun and exciting. Um, we do not want to stress anybody out. So um, please do um, take a look at those teacher recommendations. Um, and again, that international language and culture course um, for students with no prior world language credits. So if they've already taken Spanish one, French one, German one, and it's a couple years later, and they're like, oh, I need another arts and humanities credit, 
Unfortunately, international language and culture is not an option if you have already earned a credit. So that means in ninth, 10th, or 11th grade, you've previously earned. As a senior, you wouldn't be able to, or any combination of those years. All right, SOS. Uh, first of all, um, just for awareness, um, your student will need to select PE on their course selection for whatever grade level they're going into the following year. So ninth grader picks PE 10. Um, health one is for ninth grade students. Um, and health two can be taken in 11th or 12th grade. So if your students are going into any of those classes, they should be taking those as well. Safety ed isn't up there. That's the driver's ed course. That's typically taken in 10th grade as well. And then our virtual academy, um, which is our CVA, Mrs. Knapp had mentioned that earlier. There is a full-time online option, which is free, um, and that just basically would replace, um, if your student wants to go full-time in a virtual academy, they can do that. Um, but if they're doing, if they want to do that for next year, they should still pick day school classes, and we will change that over after the fact. They will just want to let their counselor know that. They won't be able to select full-time CVA on course selection this year in power school. Um, there are also enrichment options and blended options as well. Um, sometimes there are costs involved with these options. So again, if your student wants to take something um, in CVA that maybe we don't offer in day school, that's another conversation to have with their counselor. So I'll just finish this part since I'm up here, Patricia. Um, so at this time, the students will begin to talk, if they haven't already, will begin to discuss their selections with their teachers and also hopefully with you. Um, you are an important part of this process, so we would like, ideally, for you and your student to sit down and do this process together. Um, we don't require parent signature anymore. Our hope, though, is that parents will work with their students and make sure that they know what their students have chosen and are good with that. Um, if you look at your, your child's course selection and you go, whoa, that's too many, you know, the classes are too hard or this is too easy, let us know. We can certainly work that out with you. Uh, February 14th, which is Monday, this is when Power Schools class registration will open up and students can begin to put in their course selections and then they'll have until February 28th. Um, the weeks of March 1st through 11th, they will be meeting individually with their counselor for a very short session. Um, this will happen out of their English classes, so about five to seven minutes they'll meet with their counselor. We'll review everything, make sure everything's good to go. If they have any questions, that's a good time to answer those with them. So they don't need to necessarily come in and make an appointment with us to discuss course selection, just have them put in their course selection and then we will be reaching out to them and talking with them. Um, and if it needs to be a longer discussion, we can certainly set up another time. And this was mentioned before, um, they're gonna make selections now and then maybe decide in April, uh, I picked French four and I don't really wanna take French four now, I'd like to take marketing. That's fine, they just need to come in and let us know, we can change that for them and we can pretty much guarantee almost any change till the end of the school year. After June 20th, schedules start to be run and we cannot make any, cannot guarantee that we'll be able to make schedule changes at that point. So it's important for them to let us know earlier instead of later. Okay, so thank you for sitting. This was a long presentation, but I think it was very important information that was given out today. Um, so right now we'll take uh, general questions, just anything generally, if it's something specific to your student, you know, please hold those questions. Um, but if somebody has a general question, we would be happy to answer them. Yes. So the question was, is um, the history day required for social studies courses? Honors courses. Do you want to answer that, Kevin? I mean, I kind of. <laughs> so the National History Day program, because it teaches the research skills, is still a requirement for Honors U.S. History and Honors World History. Yes. This young man asked if he could register for this school. Well, I don't know if you're over 21, but if you are, unfortunately, no. But thank you. <laughs> I know, we have a lot of offerings. It's amazing. Yes, yes. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. So the question was, is there community service requirements for civics? 
should just left you up there. You should just stay up there. Yeah, when students take the civics course, there is a requirement that they complete six hours of community service, and that can be with any nonprofit organization within our community. We do provide students, we have a list of over 40 different nonprofits. Project Share is obviously one of the biggest ones, um, but it's just six hours. Yeah. Good questions. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Uh, the question was, Was is there a JROTC program? Unfortunately, there is not. Um, we've been trying for several years. It just hasn't come to fruition, so unfortunately, no. We have never done that before, and I don't think so. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay. Well, thank you so much for your time, and um, if you have questions, please let us know. Have a safe trip. Thank you.